as a warning to you, I am sick right now, so that's why my voice is a little wonky. I've got the tea going with honey. Oh, that's really hot. I'm not gonna do that. Audio quality isn't gonna be its best, but we're just gonna keep pushing forward. <laughs> Most of the time when we talk about getting organized, I feel like I always think firstly about the physical spaces in my home, like my closet or my office, which is just bonkers to me because I spend a lot of time editing videos, editing photos, uh, writing outlines for videos, replying to emails, yada, yada, yada. And yet my computer has no system in place for keeping things organized so that I can find things quickly. I often feel like my computer is just always full and there's never enough storage, so I end up having to stop projects I'm working on just to clear up space, just enough space so that I can finish the project I'm currently working on. And the idea of doing a whole computer overhaul has always been something I say that my future self will do. And the day has come for me to become my future self and to tackle this thing. So I thought I would take you guys along with me my phone's going off. So today I thought I would take you along with me through this honestly hellish process to maybe inspire you to do some digital organizing yourself. Uh, or maybe this will just confirm that this is something that you're gonna put off for another few months until the situation gets dire and you have no choice but to do it, which is kind of like what's happened to me right now. So I get it. A little tea break. Coat that throat. <laughs> Before I started anything, I just wanted to see kind of where where my computer was at uh, in terms of the storage situation, and it was not a good look. I had less than 10 gigabytes of storage left, which honestly is not entirely shocking to me because whenever I have any big projects to do, like editing a video, uh, I always feel like I run into that your storage space is almost full message. That notification has just become a normal part of my life. But the distribution of where my storage was taken up was kind of interesting. I had a lot of things in documents, in photos, in apps, also a ton of things in other, which to be honest, still don't even know what is classified as other. I went to the manage section where I could see some large files that were taking up space in different categories and I found some things I could delete like old videos but I also found some things I wanted to make sure I, I protected like my graduation ceremony video and then it was time for the real process to begin. My plan of attack for getting my laptop sorted out was to start off with a purge where I delete all the files that I don't need anymore. Basically I would go through every file and decide if it was a keep or a delete. And if it was a delete, I deleted. But if it was a keep, I would sort that file into some big category folders that I had set up. And after I went through all the files in one go, I would do another run through of all my files, but I would be going into those folders specifically and sorting things into subcategory folders, renaming files so that I could easily find things in the future, that sort of thing. The first section I decided to tackle in this way on my computer was the down download section. The download section on my computer is by far the scariest section in my computer. It's full of, of music for videos, PNGs of animations I do on my iPad, contracts, outlines, thumbnails, so many thumbnails. And I had stuff all the way back till June of 2017. I decided to start with my older files rather than my newer files first because I figured I'd be able to do the most deleting with those older files because it's been some of those files have been on my computer for three years and if I haven't opened them in three years then it's probably because I don't need them. Thankfully I did come across so many things I could delete. Um, I also came across really random stuff like memes that although they gave me a chuckle definitely did not warrant being stored on my laptop. I'm talking to you Ron Swanson. I love you but you needed, you needed to go. Some tips for deleting files. I felt like deleting files was the same as going through my closet because I could almost always find hypothetical situations where I would need to maybe possibly one day access something. I definitely had way too many school related things for someone who's graduated. I don't need to be holding on to lecture notes or lecture slides. And at the beginning I found myself like holding on to those things in case one day I want to reference them again. But then as I got through the process or I kept going through the process I got more and more cutthroat mostly because I was just getting exhausted but it also meant that I was actually finally deleting things I really didn't need anymore. However, that being said, I would recommend you take it slow and make sure you read every single file name that you are deleting because obviously I'm going to assume that like me, you probably have some things that you don't want to delete. And because this process is tedious, it's easy to kind of 
just start your your eyes can just start glazing over as you are going through everything so make sure you're intentionally reading through taking it slow uh, so that you don't accidentally throw something out that you actually didn't want to throw out and definitely recommend taking breaks because I'm pretty sure a small part of my soul died on this day I just spent nearly two hours going through that download section and I'm already over this. <laughs> it does feel good to have it completely clear, but now I have to go through my document section, which is equally not so fun. I think I need to like pop on a movie or something because this is incredibly boring. <laughs> By the end of this process in my downloads folder, I was able to delete over 3,600 things and it felt so, so good. And then it was on to the document section. the download section and my documents the same day I decided to split it up much like the narration of the beginning and the second half of this video because sometimes doing it all at once is just too much organizing my documents although also tedious was still a lot less stressful than the downloads because uh, everything was in general categories so at least I knew what I was looking at all I had to do was go into each of those big folders and continue finding ways to add more folders, grouping like things together. And that's why I feel like personally, there's not like a real system of like exact folders that will work for everyone. It really depends on the kinds of things that you have on your computer and that's gonna be completely personal to you. I do though find that sorting things by like categories um, makes a lot more sense to me than sorting things by dates just because the things that I have to look up, I don't always know like what time of the year I, I created that thing or I saved that document. So it's a lot more efficient for me to just know, oh, I need an outline, uh, let me go to the outline section rather than, oh, I need an outline from this video, when did that video go up, let me go check on the YouTube page to find the upload date, blah, blah, blah. I went through my photos as well, deleted tons of things. Big tip for Mac users, if you're deleting photos, make sure that after you delete them, you go into the recently deleted folder and confirm that delete because it saves them on your computer for like 30 days, which is a great feature when you have the space for it. But if you're desperate for space, uh, then you wanna make sure those photos get off your computer as soon as possible. My notes app was also just ridiculous. I've learned that I create a lot of grocery lists that I never end up deleting. So I got rid of those, deleted tons of other things, saved what was important, which wasn't very much at all. And what I did save, again, I sorted it into folders. I pretty much repeated the same process that I used for my my computer files for my hard drive as well. So this right here is the current status of my computer. I now have 46 gigs of available space on my laptop, which is huge. I don't think it's been that high in so long. I do think, however, though, this guy right here, Chip, which is the name I have for my solid state drive from Samsung. Yes, I name my hard drives off of Disney characters. That's Ariel. But clearly there's not enough space here because there is only 11 gigs and this is what I use to edit videos off of. So I'm gonna spend some time clearing that up, maybe even clearing my memory card up a bit because it doesn't have much space either. So much more deleting to do. I'm pretty sure this is like my third coffee and it's noon. It's painful, this process. So I just finished clearing tons of space off of this hard drive. Now I've got 325 gigs available and I sorted everything into proper folders. This is gonna make it so much easier to back all of this up onto my second hard drive over there, which I'm going to do right now. When I'm backing things up, I like to back things up to not just one hard drive, but two hard drives, just because technology often fails. And if something happens to the first one, then I wanna know that I at least I have a second one. There's also cloud-based storage that you can do to replace like one of those hard drives, so that's a great option. Backing up your files though is so important and it's one of those things that you really will regret not doing once something happens. I've had a few scares myself and it's not fun, so I wanna avoid those. And I'm gonna be making a commitment to even add 
uh, backup reminders, monthly backup reminders to my Google Calendar once a month just to make sure I'm keeping up with this system. Because if you just say, oh yes, I'll just back up regularly and you leave it to chance, then chances are you're probably going to go a year without backing things up and you're going to be in a similar kind of situation again. The part of this process that I was the most dreading and knew it was the part that I most needed to do was going through my emails. At one point, I showed on Instagram stories, I had over 3,000 unread emails in my inboxes. That's not counting red stuff, that's not counting stuff in different categories of my inboxes that weren't showing up. So there was thousands and thousands of things to sort through. And I have over the years just become desensitized to it, but I know it's gonna get worse so it was time for some major decluttering. The main difference between deleting things from your inbox versus deleting things from your actual computer is things aren't going to just magically appear on your computer. You actually have to download something or create something so you know when something new is being added there. When it comes to your inbox, especially if you're subscribed to a lot of newsletters, things will just keep piling up. People are free to send you emails whenever they want. You don't have as much control over how much you accumulate there. But something you do have control over is how many subscriptions you're like signed up for, how many newsletters you're receiving from companies or people. And that to me was the part of my inbox that was getting so out of hand. So I really wanted to make sure that as I deleted um, newsletters, I was making sure that I also unsubscribed from them. And every email that you subscribe to should have an unsubscribe button at the bottom of the email. Um, and I did that for so many things. There's obviously some really great newsletters that I am uh, signed up to that I am happy to continue receiving emails. But some of these like just give me multiple emails a week and I am over it. So I unsubscribe from them and it feels good to know that I not only deleted all of those emails, but or a majority of those emails, but I also will not continue to receive them. Now, if your inbox is a lot less intense than mine, then you probably can uh, spend a day or two, you know, deleting things and sorting things and you'll have a fresh, clean inbox. But that is not my situation at all. And after I did all the unsubscribing and did big deletes in, in those categories, uh, I was still left with thousands of emails that I decided just were going to be archived. I kid you not, when I started working on my inboxes, it was daylight and now it is, it is evening. That took me so long <laughs> and I didn't just go through one email. I have like multiple email accounts and all of them were just like full of crap. One of the emails that I've had since like 2012 had 24,000 emails in one subcategory of my inbox. 24,000, excuse me. In 2020, I'm gonna be a new person. When an email comes in, I'm gonna deal with it right away. I'll read it, I'll address whether or not it's something I need to keep. If I need to keep it, I'll archive it. If I don't need to keep it, I'll delete it. If I need it temporarily, I'll sort it. I'm gonna be a different person, a different email person. <laughs> this number was over 3,000 and now it's at 12. So exciting. So won't lie though, it is painful. Um, I think archiving everything ended up being a really good decision because I do think after um, you know, a certain amount of time of you going through your inbox, you start not paying attention as closely. And for my work email especially, I didn't want to be deleting things that I actually may need to go back to because sometimes I go back to projects just to reference, you know, for a specific brand deal, like um, I'll look back at contracts or terms just to give me insights for future deals or I might need to pick up something from a conversation. So it's really important to keep those emails uh, and I didn't, I felt like there was that point there where once I got to like my the main part of my inbox, not just dealing with subscriptions, uh, like actual emails back and forth with humans conversations, I, I felt like I was starting to get less and less focused. So uh, I feel like archiving things is just the way to go. I kind of get to start fresh now, but I still have everything I need if I ever need to go look something up. Big fan. 
Archiving is a dream. Love it so much. I'm gonna do it all the time. At this point, I was pretty much done with the organizing aspect of things, but one of the things I like about organizing my home is that at the end, I look around and I see something really aesthetically pleasing, but on my computer, I just see less of a mess, which is still satisfying to see. But I wanted to add a little fun to things, so I actually took this opportunity to also spruce up my desktop wallpaper. I went as far as to actually cleaning my laptop screen cleaning my keyboard. I cannot emphasize it enough. I'm so happy that this process is over. I still have small things to do here and there, but this was a huge step forward. I will definitely be remembering the pain of organizing my computer so that I don't let things get to this level again. And that really is, I think, the point of organizing. It's not just about finding temporary solutions to messy problems. It's how can we create systems that are sustainable to keep up with. And I think with what I created, the chances of me getting back to that bad point are a lot less high, thankfully. Like I said earlier in the video, hopefully this inspired you to finally tackle your own digital organization. I am not an expert. I feel like I'm at the beginning of a really long digital organization journey, but if you have tips or hacks for digital organization, please share your wisdom in the comments below to help out people um, in the future or to even help myself out when I do another round of, of this um, because I do want to make it a more regular thing. Subscribe, hit the notification bell if you haven't already, like this video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you all very soon with a new video. Until then, bye guys. This video file that I just filmed better not be on my computer in 2023. <laughs> Okay, future Caitlin. <laughs>